Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'll be painting goldfishes. These fishes are inspired by Li Qingheng who uses Chinese calligraphy techniques for watercolors and I'll leave a link to her Instagram in the description box if you're interested. These may look simple but I think it does take quite a bit of accuracy to paint it but hopefully this tutorial will be clear enough to show you the steps and like usual let me just show you the sketch so it might be a bit easier to understand. For this, I like to start with the tip of the mouth and I just do a tiny inverted smile. Then from here, I continue to either draw the body or the eyes. For the body, I want the bottom half to be a bit rounder than the top to leave a bit of space for the eyes. But as I paint, I actually like to paint the eyes first. I just find it a bit easier to build the body that way. However, you don't have to follow the exact steps and just jump around as long as you understand the anatomy. Before I draw on the tail, I always like to leave a little bit of space in between and I just connect it with a small section to make the tail look a bit more flowy. Then I draw the tail and also the tiny fins on the sides. You can paint the tails differently. In Li Qinghang's tutorial, she paints them in three sections, but I actually like the four sections which creates more of an open fan look and you can either make the tips a bit more rounded or pointy depending on your taste. Again, for the tail, I like to start by separating the left and the right section so I draw the two lines in the middle to get something that's a bit more balanced but if you don't need that extra help to balance it out then just tackle it whichever way is comfortable for you. I would suggest for you to draw quite a few of these until you get acquainted with the shapes that you're going to create because though I'm not going to use the minimal brush strokes of Chinese calligraphy painting, I'll be using a bit of wet on wet technique which would be a little bit more time sensitive so understanding the shapes without having to look at a reference every so often I think would be more ideal so it's not as stressful. Next, I'll be drawing out the decorative elements that I'm going to incorporate into the painting. I'm going to add lily pads, which I just draw out like an oval with a missing pizza slice. I'm also going to add a plant called hornwort plants. I see goldfish paintings paired with this a lot in Japanese or Chinese paintings, especially when I went to a goldfish art installment when I visited Tokyo, so I decided to add that in. And then lastly, I also added a little bit of movement to the water with these detached oval shapes. Let's go over the colors now. Firstly, for the goldfish, I'm going to be using Permanent Yellow Deep and Vermilion. And then for the eyes, I'm just going to use Ivory Black. The reason why I chose those colors instead of just using orange is because I prefer to be able to play with the tones of orange, whether I'd like it to be a bit more red or more on the yellow side, so the painting doesn't really look too one-dimensional. Next, for the colors of the water and greeneries, I'll be using Compost Blue, Permanent green number two, hooker screen. This one is by Quatman, where the rest is by Holbein, by the way. And then I also use oral in yellow and yellow ochre. Okay, so now we're ready to start painting. I'm going to first take a good amount of vermilion and permanent yellow deep. As you can see, I'm taking a very thick consistency from the thickness of the paint and find the orange color that you like at this point. You can always thin the paint easily on the palette to adjust by adding more water, but here I just like to start in quite a heavy consistency to paint the mouth, eyes, and the middle of the spine to make the direction of the fish clear so we can build up the body evenly on both sides. I'm just going to drag what I have from the spine to create the round body on either side. It would also look nice to vary the consistency here so you can also take off a little bit of paint if you would like to, but at this point I'm just going to focus on getting the right shape and silhouette. I like to stop around the tail area after adding that tiny little bit to extend the tail and I'm just going to paint it like how I drew it out before. I prefer to add the two-way lines to separate the two sections. Then I also added the outer tails on both sides. 
I'm using a thinner consistency for this so the tail looks lighter in comparison to the body and this will also help make the tail look more delicate and flowy. To fill in the tail, I used a light consistency on a well-loaded brush and I put a good amount of pressure and dragged the brush to create the wavy feel and the uneven paint distribution. I like to do this so the paint looks a bit more textured and loose and for the tiny fins, I like to direct the tip of my brush to the body so I can press down to create the small fins. You can also rotate the paper or your sketchbook around to avoid contorting your hands weirdly. At this point, the paint on the body of the fish is still slightly damp, but it's a bit too dry for my liking. But I'm just going to take a higher ratio of vermilion to create a red-orange color and place this to separate the eyes and also to create a random pattern along the spine. I find that this gives a bit more form to the fish so it looks a bit more rounded and because the surface is a bit more on the damp to dry side, I decided to clean my brush and take a bit more water on my brush to help distribute the red-orange very slightly. Then to finish off this goldfish, I used a medium to thin consistency to add wavy lines for the tail just to add a bit of detail. I used the same brush but for easier control you can always switch to a smaller one. Then I just add the eyes using a medium consistency of ivory black on the tip. For the next fish, I want it directed differently and since I find that drawing towards myself is easier for me to maneuver my brush around, I decided to rotate my sketchbook and this is why painting the spine is also very helpful when you're painting on an angle that you're not very familiar with. But for the rest of this, it's basically the same as the previous cold fish for my painting because I have limited space on my small sketchbook and because I want to paint something that's a bit more cleaner and simplistic for this one, I decided to only paint two goldfish but if you want a fuller pond look or something like that, you can add as many as you can fit in your page or as many as you would like to. And now I'm just going to keep painting this one, then I'll get back to you after I finish this fish. After I finish painting this fish, I'm going to paint a very faint blue color for the background. This will also look nice on just white plain paper depending on the look that you're going for, but I personally like the complementary colors of blue and orange, but I'm just going to paint the blue very very lightly, so I want to make sure that my brush is completely clean from the orange for this. This is why I changed my water and I keep dabbing my brush on tissue to make sure that there are no more orange. This is very important because complementary colors when mixed will create brown and I want the blue to be as clear as possible to help the orange pop out more. After my brush is nice and clean, I'm just going to wet the surface all around the fish. You can also switch to a larger brush for this, but I find that the size is perfect to get around the tight spaces as well. And I want this composition to be diagonal, so I'm wetting the area that I'm going to paint only from the bottom right to the top left. I'm doing this quite quickly because I want even distribution, so I like to go back to areas where it's already drying to add a bit more water every now and then. After I covered most of the area, I used a thin consistency of compost blue to just very faintly tint the color of the surface, and because the water is now seeped into the paper, the blue won't run as fast, so I also help it move around using my brush. I try to mostly place the blues near the fish because again I want those complementary colors next to each other and towards the edges you can still use the same technique of cleaning your brush and pulling the paint outwards to create a softer gradient if the surface is slightly drying already. Thank you. 
For this, I like to work in sections so you can see that the color is not evenly distributed. There are faded areas and also more concentrated areas. And in fact, I'm going to now use a medium consistency so the color is a bit more saturated to add in small portions or at least less than the faded areas that I've previously painted. So now the background has more tonal value and texture with small bursts of colors. I'm going to stop here with the blue background because I don't want to overwork it and now we're going to work on the decorative elements. Firstly, I'm going to paint the lily pads and for this I'm going to use the colors Permanent Green Number 2, Yellow Ochre to mute the color and Oralin Yellow to brighten the green. I place them next to each other so I can always pick and adjust the color easily and to paint this obviously it's preferable to wait for the surface to completely dry out but I didn't have either one of the two things that I needed back then which is a hair dryer or patience so I just went with it but it's really ideal for the surface to dry first so you don't have to fiddle around with tissue and repainting things and constantly fixing it like what I'm doing here. I'm just painting this like how I've drawn them out before and I also played around with the size making sure to include many smaller ones so it doesn't take away from the focal point which are supposed to be the goldfishes. I think here I'm bordering on adding too much lily pad, so I quickly decided to move on to the next element, which are the hornwort plants. And for this, I'm going to mix in hooker screen, compost blue, and yellow ochre. And you can also take some of the lily pad greens to add on to it if you would like to. These plants are so light and fine that painting these feels more like drawing it out with the tip of my brush and I got tired after a while controlling the water flow so after a bit I decided to switch to my size 0 brush for this. I like to always start with the main line to map out the movement of the plant as well as the length then I just fill in the foliage with those small curved lines in each section. I felt like these plants look a little bit too flat compared to the rest of the painting so I decided to go back with a second layer of a dark green tone to add to small parts so it doesn't look too one-dimensional. I also decided to add a couple of loose hornworts scattered in the water because I feel like this would unify the composition a little bit more. So using the hornwort green with added compost blue, I decided to paint a bit of shadows for all of the elements that I've already painted. I'm using a medium to light consistency for this just to help the elements stand out a little bit more because at the moment I feel like everything is just blending in the background.
Lastly, I decided to use a light consistency of the same color to add to the water texture. I want the water texture to be nice and light because I want to consider this part of the background. And because there are a lot of lines, I don't want this to distract from those elements that I just enhance with the shadows. Then after painting a few of these, we can finally take off the masking tape to reveal the painting. So this is the finished painting. This was an easy but not so easy painting, so I hope that the steps were clear enough for you to learn from. Like usual, all of the tools as well as my social media links will be placed in the description box. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and if you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!